Welcome. We're looking at Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Many consider this his mini magnum opus, second only to the book of Romans. Ephesians has been beloved by many Christians for a long time. It's, it's, when I ask people, it's often considered their favorite New Testament book. It really is an amazing epistle. And Paul is writing it at a transition point in his life. He is imprisoned and he's looking to do further work and travels preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. We'll look at some of those details later when Paul makes reference to his circumstances. But right now I want to have us look at these opening verses which really provide a framework for understanding the rest of Ephesians. So we're talking about Ephesians 1 verses 1 through 14. Now these verses are structured in two parts. The first is an epistolary, a standard opening where Paul identifies himself that he's an apostle and that he's sent by God, that God is behind what Paul is doing and that Paul really is an apostle of Jesus Christ, that he represents Jesus Christ and carries forth his message. But I really want us to get to this idea of the blessing, 1, 3 through 14. This is one long sentence in the Greek text and it, it exudes praise of God. Paul is praising God for his saving activities and he wants the believers in Ephesus and the broader environment of Asia Minor, he wants these believers to know that they belong to God's plan, that God has chosen them to be on his team. Now why this is so important is that the majority of these are non-Jews, that is, non-Israelites. They were considered outsiders, but now Paul says they've been picked to be on the team, and they've been marked with the Holy Spirit that is a sign that they belong to God's people. So Ephesians really is describing the blessings that have now come to them. And really all of the book of Ephesians is describing in, in, in minute detail how they are blessed. You see, God has always wanted to have a people uniquely His own. God has been working in history, time and space, slowly revealing Himself, first through a person, Abraham, then through his descendants, Israel, and then eventually the vision was broadened to include not just one nation, but all the nations of the earth. And that's what's happened with the coming of Jesus Christ. When God sent Jesus Christ, he opens up his plan of salvation, his will, and made known the mystery of his will to include all peoples. And so this is this is really what this opening is about, is saying to the Gentiles that you belong to God's people. Now, how are they included in God's people? What makes them a part of God's people? Well, Paul describes a process that they went through. First, they heard the word of truth, that is the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Now, this good news is, is exactly what it sounds like. It is salvation. It brings blessings and, and wonderful things for them. So they heard this message and in response to it, they believed. And this is, this is the proper response when you hear what God has done to save you. It is to trust that God is true to His Word. And this is what they did. They believed the good news. And as a result of, of hearing and believing, God has responded in kind to send them his Holy Spirit. They're, they're sealed with the Holy Spirit. Now a lot of people will misunderstand what this sealing means. They'll think of uh, saran wrap or a lock and key that it's somehow sealed, closed, and, and no longer accessible or freed uh, to be escaped. But that's not the, the meaning of the word seal. The word seal here has to do with official marking, like a signet ring. Uh, kings had rings with their seal on it, and when they wanted to mark something as official, they would have the wax on it and they would mark it, and that was called the sealing. And so believers in Christ Jesus have God's official marking on them. That is, the Holy Spirit is a mark that they're authentic, that they're, they belong to God, that they're in His family, 
and that they're legitimate. And so that's what Paul wants to communicate, especially to believers in Ephesus, is that they are legitimate and belong to God's people. And really, I think this strikes to a core of what it means to be a human being. I think we all struggle with being legitimate. We feel like phonies. We feel like we don't belong. We wonder what our place is in life. And Paul says that we, in fact, have a place, that God has always wanted a people to be uniquely his own people, a holy people, and that's what we now have become in Christ Jesus. And so we have to understand that the, the linchpin to God's plan, the key, the center of it is, in fact, revealing Jesus Christ to us, that is, Jesus as a king. And so when we hear the good news of Jesus the king, and we believe the good news of Jesus the King, God seals us and we become legitimate and now God's, we become God's special people.